This is the ASI BAC 800 or BAC 800. In a nutshell, it's a high quality motor controller engineered in Canada. It has a high degree of customization and pushes the limits of e-bike motors like the BBS HD. This controller sends 50 amps to the motor, which increases the peak power in watts to about 27 to 2800 watts. So that's almost triple the power that it's rated for at 1000 watts. So really, Bafang did a lot right in the engineering of the motor. It's just a shame that the controller they made did not match. I'm going to put some links in the description uh, to some more information on the controller and some of the features that it has, which includes something called field weakening, which has the effect of increasing the top speed of the motor. Honestly, I don't have much of a clue how it works, but there seems to be um, a trade off between the top speed and the motor torque. That said, the torque seems much better with this controller too, so maybe the field weakening doesn't really kick in until you get to higher speeds. The difference that the controller has made to the motor, I don't think can be understated. Alan Hugh from Electric Race Technologies said that the difference would be like night and day, and I think he's 100% on the money. It's not even just about ripping the throttle and running it at top speed either. The controller has made the bike so much nicer to ride in every single aspect from faster acceleration and speed to holding a steady cruising speed to using the pedal assist. The pedal assist is cleverly scaled so if you want to you can easily get a hard day of riding trails with actual physical exercise if you want to. Uh, level 1 is set to 200 watts of pedal assist power Level 5 is set to 1,000 watts of pedal assist. So generally sensible levels that allow you to ride trails and get exercise for people of pretty much any fitness level. The throttle is similarly scaled with 1,000 watts or so at level 1, and it's wide open at about 2,800 watts at level 5, which kind of makes a ton of sense, really. I mean, if you run into difficulty climbing a steep trail, you just got to rip on the throttle a bit rather than the bike getting stuck. Uh, or if you just have to stop on a hill, you can start really easily with just a quick twist of the throttle. Um, I've done a few test runs at the five different levels I have the bike at, and it should give you some idea of how this works.
terms of safety, I think this much power actually makes the bike much safer because uh, traffic lights and stop signs, you can accelerate away into a safe space faster than most of the cars around. Um, I hate being passed by loads of traffic on a bike and this control allows me to keep up with the traffic. Um, down any kind of a hill, like just like half a second on throttle just leaves cars with dust. Um, the point being that having a bit of power and using it sensibly um, allows you to maintain a safe zone around the bike and that keeps you out of the way of other vehicles very effectively. Um, there's also a few other neat tricks to ensure uh, the bike is not only fast but really, really smooth. Um, the main one being uh, motor engagement. So the original Bafang controller, um, although perfectly uh, functional, uh, did its job. It tended to lead to uh, a bit of a jerky ride just because of its, its very on, off, on, off um, in terms of uh, how it works, either with the throttle or the, the pedal assist. Um, so if you're on the throttle or on the pedal, um, the power goes through the motor and it, it, it snaps the chain because the chain's slack when there's no power on and it's tight when there is power on. So you tend to get that snap. Um, and I don't know, it, it kind of made trail riding a little bit difficult at times, um, certainly on tighter trails. Um, but the new controller, the ASI one, has a, a neat trick that, um, that takes care of that. So if I just crank the pedal a bit to get the, uh, the pedal assist going, and you see that the motor engages and it will stay engaged now until you break right or you run into a small hill or you know anything like that that, that puts a bit of stress on the motor because if i start it going again you can see that it's actually putting very little watts through the motor like 67 watts which is which is nothing i mean it, it won't accelerate you um, if you're on the flat, it will move you forward, um, but it takes very little effort to stop. But what that does is it keeps the chain tight at all times. So if you come off the throttle, the chain doesn't go slack. And then when you're back on, jerk you again, it's still moving. So you're just putting more power through it, and that helps to make it really, really smooth when you accelerate. So I haven't actually changed gear once since I installed the new controller. It does like 50 kilometers an hour on the flat. And that's on this, uh, this 42 tooth gear here. So going any lower just puts more stress on a motor that like is already really being pushed here anyway. Um, I mean, it's fast enough to keep up with traffic in most conditions that I ride in. So I'm pretty happy with that. So the motor definitely gets hotter than when it was run with less amps going. Uh, I've been feeling the motor casing with my hand after doing riding. Full throttle up hills tends to heat it up quite a bit, but really not to the point where I'm unable to hold my hand on the motor. Um, I think there's a safety cutoff around 120 degrees Celsius. Uh, that said, I reckon it'd be pretty easy to destroy the motor with this controller. If you pick like a, a low gear and stuck 50 amps into it, it probably would melt the nylon reduction gear. But then I know this, so I'd be a bit of an idiot to try it. So really it's about keeping the motor spinning fast and stopping it from building up heat. And I think if I sort the gears and chain line up, it's gonna be pretty reliable to ride around. So there are two ways to get one of these, uh, at least in Canada and I'll post the links to both of them in the description. Uh, the first is to buy one from ASI directly. Uh, it's a Canadian company, and you get what's called an evaluation kit, and that gets you direct support from their engineers, who, I don't know, presumably via a video link or something, will assist you to set up the BAC 800 and configure it to your requirements. Uh, the second uh, is to buy it from a reseller, such as Electric Race Technologies, which is what I did. Um, doing it this way meant I also got a 3D printed cover uh, for where the wiring mated with the BBSHD and a wiring loom 
to connect the various sensors to the back 800. So it's pretty much a plug and play solution this way. Uh, I think there's advantages to both. Uh, with a manufacturer, you get to log on to their Bluetooth app, which makes future configuration easier. Um, with the electric race technologies, uh, where you get the owner Allen experience in setting up the BAC 800 to work really well with the uh, with the e-bike motor or the BBS HD. Um, he's obviously put quite a lot of thought into the various parameters uh, that the controller is using and that I'm using, therefore, in this BAC 800. Um, is this the best controller for the BBS HD? Um, I don't know. There are other options, so I don't think I'm qualified to say this is the best, certainly with my experience. Uh, people have built really good bikes that are faster than mine with other options. Uh, that said, I would say that the motor is 10 times the motor than it was with the stock controller. And I think it's definitely worth checking out if you have a BBS HD bike. And certainly if you want a smoother ride. If you don't want 2800 watts of power, just leave it in level three. I mean, it's still going to be plenty fast and you'll get exercise in places. It's just going to be how you had it before. It's just going to be really, really, really smooth. So at the moment, everything's rather just zapped, tied on and strapped on. Um, so the bike kind of looks something a little bit like out of Mad Max at the moment. Um, so I want to work on that and get everything tidied away properly and make sure it's waterproof because I'm not sure it is at the moment um, Make sure I don't get any I mean the unit itself is waterproof, but um, some of the cabling and stuff. I'm not so sure about um, I also want to work on the chain line because Although I think it might be fine at lower power the more power I put through this It's still not not the best. I don't know if you can see there or not um, but because I don't need any of these bloody gears here, um, I might as well just get rid of them and uh, either go uh, with just one cog or maybe this one and, and keep this one. Um, I've seen some people keep one of these like as a sort of get your home gear that you can drop it in. Um, but yeah, maybe I don't know how much of this actually comes apart um, when I disassemble it. If it's just these three gears that are loose and the rest are in a block, which you get sometimes. Uh, maybe I can drill the rivets out or something um, but yeah definitely want to work on that and get everything tidied away um, and looking a bit better because there's like red wires and green wires and all sorts of wires coming out of there and this is uh, I mean this has to be exposed apparently to the airflow because you've got like heat sinks here um, it hasn't got that warm since I've been riding it the motor has got warm while I've been riding it. Um, not like burningly hot, um, but I'd say it's getting, you know, to about 80 degrees, like on the outside of the case. And um, so maybe a little bit hotter than that on the inside. Um, but I mean, I'm putting twice the power it was rated for, maybe more than that into it. So um, I guess you've got to expect a bit of heat. Um, 